the market is open and it is looking very mixed all across the board and today we are focusing our attention on a company that has reported and in fact it is SMP Global, an incredibly high quality company that we want to take a look at today. Is it undervalued? Should we buy the dip? As we can see, a fairly strong earnings and it is down around 3%. We're going to cover that today. First things first though, how did they look in terms of the expectations against the market? Well, we can see their EPS came in at 389, which was a nice beat in terms of the comparison of the market at 364. We also note in terms of the revenue, 3.58 billion, a lot better than the market anticipation of 3.44. And to top all of this off, they in fact did increase their earnings per share estimate moving forwards. 15.1 to 15.3 we're going to cover this when we do come to in fact their quarterly update from today but overall it is looking as strong as expected now this is a company that is up 46 percent over the last 12 months over the last 10 years as we will come to show you massive outperformance of the smp up 467 it is still trading even after the dip today towards its 52 week high we get a double buy rating seeking alpha. In fact, Wall Street's buy rating of 4.47 isn't too far off the 4.5 to get a strong buy notification. And we can see Quant, as always, giving this company a hold. Now, in terms of the forward yield, 0.71% may not be something that is as attractive to those who want to see high dividends. But in terms of share price return, it does look incredibly attractive. We also note the forward P 34.4, which we will come on to discuss now as well. So their earnings estimations moving forwards, they are expecting growth on a year on year basis. And remember, this is a company when we look back, they have outperformed three of the last four quarters. In fact, when we look at Q4, this was a very narrow miss. So we would say we have faith in management and their forecasting abilities. If they do hit ultimately their earnings per share estimate in 2025, it will lower the forward P down to 31.16. And as we have mentioned in previous episodes, this is a company that does trade above the SMP's 25. So there is a premium. Is it worth it? That is what we want to come to understand in today's episode. Now, before we jump into the financial metrics and uncover a lot of the detail, we want to see what have they discussed in their quarterly update, as it is good to understand where management see this company in terms of the last few quarters and moving forwards. First things first, their highlights, they say revenues increase 16% on a year on year basis, of which they attribute 8% to their subscription growth. We also notice operating profit has increased and something we always like to see margins up 330 basis points earnings per share up 21 percent and also very nice to note they have repurchased 2 billion shares outstanding and anticipate to do another 1.3 billion before the year end remember we will come on to this but in essence this is returning excess cash to investor pockets something we haven't seen from many companies and in fact in their investor presentation but something smp global does talk about here is they're saying generative ai has really improved their efficiency right across the board not just in fact their productivity but also the quality of their products and that is why we are seeing an increase in their top line at the double digit rate as well as improving in the margins which they do expect will continue moving forwards in terms of the actual revenue growth, well, for the whole segment, we're seeing 16%. In terms of the operating margin, we're getting 48.5%, which, as we mentioned earlier, was a nice 330 basis points increase. Now, in terms of the growth from the same quarter last year, as we can see, 3.1 billion in 2023, now at 3.6. And they also see growth across every single income stream, some better than others. As we can see, ratings very good at 36%. Even the lowest one here, market intelligence, still up above the inflation rate of 4%. And we also note here earnings per share up 21% from the same quarter last year. So lots to love. This is truly a high quality company. And as we already mentioned, they've increased or they've in fact raised their guidance moving forwards. They now anticipate for the full year growth in their revenue to be double digits, 11.5 to 12.5. They're expecting some significant expansion in the operating side, as we already mentioned, and earnings per share as well, now expecting 20 to 21% on a year on year basis. All the signs of an incredibly high quality company. But let's digest some of the financial metrics. 
First things first, 99, very safe on the dividend score. In fact, highest score obtainable. We'll come to talk about dividend yield theory. We notice on the forward P a reasonable estimation, but something that was incredibly disappointing from this company this year, 1.1% increase to the dividend well below that inflationary target we have on this channel. Now, was reaffirmed in August this year. Effectively, the dividend cup is highly unlikely from SPGI. Now, in terms of some key metrics from the last 07-09 recession, what we can in fact see here is they increase the dividend. We notice they had negative 38% recession sales, which was in fact significantly lower than the SMP's negative 12. As we already mentioned, main reason why we are disappointed is because over both the last five and the last 10 years, they have increased their dividend at a double digit rate. However, what we will say, they have now officially become a dividend king with 50 years of consecutively increasing the dividend. Now, when we take a look at the P ratio over the last year in particular, we notice this company has been trading quite richly, in fact, above the intrinsic value from the blue tunnel. And this is one that we will run through our own valuation. But as we can see right now, it has started to enter the expected intrinsic price. Now, in terms of the other models that we use here, dividend yield theory, the first one where a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five year average. Right now, you could argue slight overvaluation as it does sit below. And the same to be said for the forward P, given now it's at 32.6, that is higher than the five year rolling. So another slight overvaluation signal. And we do notice a massively, massively higher in comparison to the financial sector of 12.5. But as we will come to show you in today's episode, this company is high quality and does deserve a massive premium. Question you need to ask yourself is how much of a premium does this deserve? Now, in terms of the free cash flow, as always over the earnings, which is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting, below 60% is what we want to see. Below 60% is what we get every year. 32% in 2023, 23% over the next 12 months. So they have no issues in terms of continually increasing the dividend at a very attractive rate. Again, very disappointing increase this year. Free cash flow, not as consistent as we want, nonetheless increasing very nicely over the last 10 years. In fact, tripled from 2014 to 2023, a nice large jump expected over the next 12 months to $16. And when we get to sales growth, we are seeing very good numbers here above the minimum three to seven percent that we want to see, especially over the last four years. In fact, since 2020, it has been double digit growth and we see that on a trailing 12 month basis. And as we just took a look when we saw their expectations, they're expecting 2024 11.5 to 12.5%. So it is looking good. And for those that love to see it on a numerical basis, we can see more than doubled over the last 10 years, five to 12.5 billion. And one thing that we have to point out with the shares outstanding, it was decreasing. They were returning a lot of excess cash until 2021. They did make an acquisition, as we can see here, showing through the increase in the shares outstanding. But one thing is for sure, as we've heard back, buying back shares is part of management allocation. They've been doing it in 2024 and will continue to do it for the remainder of the year. Then we get to ROIC. Remember 10% or more, give us faith. Management are able to effectively allocate their capital. As we've discussed on previous episodes, the acquisition has affected some of their numbers over the last few years, hence why we did see it drop in 22-23, 10% on a trailing 12-month basis. But the hope here is that we get back to the numbers that we've seen from 2014 to 2021. Then we get to the operating margin side. As always, we want operating efficiency with growth in the margins over the longer term. Something we have seen up until 2021, then it dropped in 22, but it has started to pick up in terms of growth, 39% on a trailing 12 month basis. And as we saw, just in terms of comparison from this quarter to the same quarter last year, margins have been expanded. Free cash flow margin also looking very strong every single year, but it is a little bit inconsistent, nonetheless well above that 5% minimum target. We then get to the net debt to EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. Below three is what we want. Below three is what we get. And in terms of the numbers below, so the number of years it will take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand, we get 1.81 in 2023. 
expected to go lower over the next 12 months. So really, balance sheet does look good. And as we say, this correlates as well to dividend safety. So no surprises why we see that 99 score. Now also to let you know, we've released our latest free weekly article. We drop one every single Monday morning to your inbox. We run through what's happened in the market over the last few days, as well as undervalued stocks that we do believe deserve your attention. So click on the pinned comment below, sign up, and you can read straight away. You'll also be able to gain access to 36 undervalued stocks for the month of October. We run through a lot of information, as well as the upside that Wall Street see themselves over the next year, and flag those that sit within our own portfolio. On top of that, this month you can grab 22 dividend stocks that Wall Street believe have the most upside out of the S&P 500. Again, by clicking on the pinned comment below, signing up and you can start reading. Now we see inside ownership at 0.1%, around 13 million worth of sales over the last year. Same time period, we get a very trivial amount of buys. In terms of the more recent quarter, well, no sales, no buys. Q3, we get 8.65 million worth of sales. Q2, very trivial buy. Q1, again, we get some sales. Now, full transparency, so for the more recent sales, we do, in fact, get the director. 7th of August, very, very outdated in our opinion for our analysis. But again, information is here if you want to incorporate this into your own thesis. We then get to the institutions, 87% ownership, 7 billion worth of sales over the last year. Marginally more buys, as we can see during the same time period. Although in the more recent quarter, we get double the amount of buys than sales. In Q2, we can see not far off. In Q1, we get the opposite. But overall, we can see institutions have been buying a little bit more than they have been selling, although quarter three, a lot more buying. Regardless, do your own due diligence as always and never copy institutions or insiders. As we saw, revenue has been good, more than double the growth over the last 10 years. One thing we haven't covered, though, is that bottom line net income. And when we do come to it, we want to see, is it as consistent as the top line? And the answer is pretty much yes to a certain degree. It had reported a loss in 2014 of 150 million. We see 2.6 billion in the latest quarter. And just on the trailing 12 month at 3.3 billion, we do anticipate 2024 will be a very strong year for SMP Global. Then we get to the health of the company, total cash versus total debt. We notice their cash has been very inconsistent and decreased marginally from 2.5 billion in 2014 to 2 billion in the latest quarter. When we do take a look and compare that to their total debt numerically and directionally, we can see that has increased quite dramatically, as we mentioned the more recent acquisition, going from 795 million in 2014 to 12 billion in the latest quarter. Something to consider, but so far net debt to EBITDA does look to be under control. We then get to the valuation grade, no surprises whatsoever. We've already mentioned it does trade at a massive premium to the overall sector, 35 versus 12. Right now, if you're pressing the buy button, you are paying a 179% premium. And that is pretty much reflected no matter which valuation metric. Is it worth it? Well, when we take a look at their growth grade, B minus, it is better than the sector, 10% versus 4.26. Revenue growth forward looking, well, as we saw, this isn't correct. In fact, from that presentation, they expect 11.5 to 12.5. Therefore, that is much better than the overall sector of 5.5%. And when we get to the earnings per share over the next three to five years, 13.3%, marginally better than the 10 from the overall sector. In terms of profitability, well, an A, 68% in terms of margin versus the sector 60. In terms of bottom line margin, 25%, marginally better than the 22.38 from the overall sector. Cash from operations, though, looking much, much better. 4.85 billion versus sector median of 161 million. Quick recap, we have a double buy from Seeking Alpha and Wall Street with a hold from Quant. F on valuation, B minus on growth with an A on profitability. Now, in terms of how this company has performed to others in the industry, we have some very big names. In terms of total return over the last 12 months, S&P has performed fairly strongly, up 47%. But pretty much every single one that we note here has performed as well, if not better. So the industry does look to be very good. Over the last five years, one of the best performing, up 110%. Just second, in fact, to Moody's, up 127 And over the last 10 years, we can see the best performing, up 511 Very, very good. Very strong, in fact. Question is, can they continue that performance who knows, though, as always, past performance is not an indicator of the future. Another question we have to ask is, can they continue to outperform the S&P? 
as we can see over the last year over the last five years and in fact over the last 10 years this has massively outperformed remember you need that confidence in individual stocks otherwise low cost etfs could be the solution now let's jump into the valuation model as always if you do enjoy the content value is being provided smash that like button hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop now our intrinsic value of 531 dollars we ran it through the dcf model today where we have the free cash flow year on year average growth has been nothing short of phenomenal 67 percent on a year on year basis we've gone for 16 percent today as we can see a low medium and high rate with the 16 percent and the discount rate we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value add together with the cash subtract total debt get to the equity value divide by the shares outstanding and as we can see here seven percent upside now remember these numbers are subjective and you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below putting your own numbers through whether it's for s p global or any others that you do desire for full transparency though we will show you 14 percent intrinsic value of 457 downside of 8% and for those who are more optimistic at the 18% point upside of 24% with $614 price target. So with that medium rate of 16% we take it through to the final slide where we always apply a margin of safety starting off at 10% and execute on this if it hits our three golden criteria wide moat strong financial metrics and good forward looking data now we can see in today's episode it doesn't hit the 10 cent mos level just yet in fact you are getting around a five percent margin of safety which for some people may be sufficient this is a very high quality company but for others at the 10 percent point you would need to wait for 478 for those that want to see at 15 percent a buy at 451 at 20 percent around 425 at the 25 cent point you would need to wait at just under 400 dollars so today's episode, 5% margin of safety. We see Wall Street, they do see upside. Their price target is $556 over the next year, where they see 12% upside during this period. As always, give us your thoughts in the comments below whether this is one you're looking to buy. Maybe you've got it as a hold waiting for a further dip, or maybe you have sold it as you do believe it is now overvalued. If you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Don't forget to sign up to the free weekly newsletter below and come and join us in the Patreon where we do talk about our weekly buys and sells. As always, have a great day and we'll see you all on the next one.